Let's do a show. Here goes, everybody. <laughs> this is the show. We're doing it now. Okay. Yeah. And uh, it starts in three, two, one. A little closer. My eyes ain't as good as they used to be. Wrap your mind around that one, dude. <laughs> The Morning Stream. That's the bravest thing I've ever seen a vegetable do. Good morning and welcome to TMS. It is the Morning Stream for Tuesday, April 18th, 2024. I'm Scott Johnson and that's Brian Ibbett. Hello, Brian. Hi. hi. Hey, Lieutenant Dan. I said 18th. I meant 16th. Sorry, everybody. Uh, That's all right. You Listen, know what it you're was? You're still saying uh, 2024, so I, I can't fault you. The can't, problem, uh... the problem with the widescreen monitor is, I have perfect 2020 right here at this distance, like in mm-hmm. front of me. But because mm-hmm. these are so wide, and if I eyeball it out of the corner of my eye, that six looks like an eight, unless I go like this. Oh yeah, it's an eight. Yeah. <laughs> I six. have the problem uh, <laughs> that that slice and dice game. I cannot tell uh, the the sixes, nines, and eights apart because it's all these thun- clunky pixels and yeah. uh, clunky yeah. pixel font. Yeah, clunky pixel font. I wish they'd like give you an option in that game uh, in particular to just switch to like a more smoothed out font. Yeah, or yeah. Look, uh, I get it. You know, you like doing the pixelated graphics because it's quirky and fun and trendy, but. Give me real text. You know, phone phone can actually display real text and give me real text in those spots. Yes, yeah. yeah. And there's a bunch of there's a bunch of games that do this. There's no reason this one couldn't do it. Mm-hmm. No also, reason. It's, it's one developer, so maybe we're asking too much. I don't know. Yeah, we're asking a lot for one guy. But poor that's, that's, one guy. That one guy, one guy. He's having a moment, and we want to celebrate it with him. You know, it's a great game. Yeah, yeah. he's had selling well on Steam, all that kind of stuff. Uh, well, hey everybody, we're here. We're gonna we're gonna do a show. It's uh, I don't even know what day it is. Tuesday, I guess. There's a, lot, there's a lot going on. My wife comes home tonight. I'm very excited about that. Yay! Yeah. I got uh, Brian Holinka on the uh, word on the street today, although it's just him oh, and I because cool. Greg's on his way to uh, China for a whole thing. And, so uh, really, the, today's episode should be called Streets Off the Street. Yeah. With another Brian. <laughs> Somebody. <laughs> right. Another. Scott does a show with yet another Brian. All the Brians, man. That's my job, I guess, anymore in this in this world is to collaborate with people named Brian. But that'll be fun today. So there's just a lot going on, uh, and 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 so this is a good time for me to, to to mention this. Yeah. Um, I have been just a little down lately, just a little mm-hmm. off my 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 norm, just a little not sad, Aww. not yeah, not depressed, little, just kind of um, melancholy, uh, morose. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think da- it's I the, guess down. Why not? Nothing wrong with down. I think it's the weather doing this and this and then this and the, you know, like there's something going on with the weather, and I don't know. I'm just feeling. And then I got you know, there's a lot going on before Vegas, and I'm excited about Vegas. Uh, but then I'm also thinking, okay, I got all this shit to do before I go, and I got to get some shows up and posted before I leave, so they're scheduled to pop when we when we're gone, and you know. So I just got all this on my mind, and it's making me kind of grouchy. Mm-hmm. So I did something that made me happy in my teens. And I, so I did it again. It's a thing I used to do that I used to love and that would just make me feel good, like comforty food thing for my teens. And I'm curious if you can guess what hmm. you think it might have been. Hmm. Playing with Star Wars action figures and going pew, 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 and having little battles on the bedspread. I love that idea, but that is yeah. not what I did. That's not it. Okay. No. Uh, breaking out uh, uh, Super Mario Brothers and playing with a big, chunky, blocky NES controller and, and, and all that. Oh, that also sounds great, but I did not do that, no. And yeah, also, I'll give you I'll give you a date range here. Let's say. And by the way, people, I know the answer that you all want me to say. You're all you're all saying it in chat. I'm not going to say that because. Yeah, on, you, you disgusting bunch of freaks. Come on, come on. You're both the distra- you're the, talk the, about too easy a pitch over home plate for me to to fire that one to the uprights. Okay, that's, a, that's right. Um, <laughs> Twist an Oreo says Lawmore. Okay. <laughs> that's not also bad. Sounds like a euphemism. It does. All of these things uh, sound you, like fun give me things. A few minutes. I'm going to go twist an Oreo. No way. Is this dog? I am. What is this dog? Okay. Owner walking down the path or in front of the sidewalk in front of my house. Uh oh. Looking at her phone. Uh oh. Big white dog about to take a dump yep. in my front yard. Yep. And they're going to, you got to see if they're going to pick it up or not, right? There's for a split second, I wanted to bang on the monitor. Uh, <laughs> like she'd actually be able to hear me 
hitting the window. <laughs> do you have a way to go? Hey, what do you, I mean, no. if you do it on your phone, I guess. Or I don't. Yeah, no, I don't even. There's no. There's no uh, speaker on that camera. Oh. Okay. Then move along. Good. She's moving along. She finally figured out and. and uh, She's moving along. Did they poo anyway. or no? No, no. Okay. Doug started a little, just a little, uh, like he was looking, right? You know how they, uh, they, they're sniffing the ground, like they're trying to find the perfect place that, that already doesn't smell like poo. Cause mm-hmm. why, why make a new place smell like poo? If, if, you know, uh, if it already smells like poo, you need a new place to smell like poo. Now, what would you do if I were you? Here's the thing. Yeah. What yeah. would you do if that lady suddenly stopped, put her phone in her pocket, and she squatted down to take a dump <laughs> on your grass? I know what I would do. I would immediately I, grab the camera that's on you right now, and I would yeah. pull that over and aim it at your screen. Yeah, exactly. I don't care how many little plastic micronauts that I have stuck to the top of this monitor I'm looking at right now, but I would 100% yeah. grab that camera and focus it on there so that everybody can enjoy the... Uh, enjoy the thing i'd have to uh, see yeah it. can't even turn on the sprinklers because we don't have them enabled yet because we're still got cold weather uh um uh cold weather going on still, yeah we so. haven't done ours yet either we could have probably on thursday because it was like 72 if we thought the weather was going to hold but it didn't uh, so it's cold again last night it got low so we ain't doing that but anyway brian can you guess yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Boy, I'll give you I'll give uh, you a else? date range to help you. Okay, oh, so yeah, uh, yeah. this would have occurred somewhere between the years 1982 and 1987, eight. Okay, so I mean, because it's narrowed down to a year, I don't think it's going to be video game related because you play you can play games anytime and, yeah. and do that sort of thing. Yeah. So I'm guessing it's either a movie uh, series or a TV series, and more likely a TV series because of a, of a five or six year date range. Very good. Um, you watched. This is pu- uh, this is Brian's puzzled pint brain at work, everybody. I don't know this. <laughs> That's right. You always look at the way they – why did they ask the question in that way? Yep. Um, yep. You watched a TV show. You watched The Dukes of Hazzard. Uh, n- incorrect. However, you are correct that it's a TV show. Uh, I'll give you another hint, and maybe this will help okay. you. It, it Dang, happened nee, nee, <laughs> nee, nee, nee. It happened every day. Monday through Thursday, occasionally on Fridays. Oh. It almost sounds like TMS, but it's not. Got it. <laughs> occasionally on Fridays, too, yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. Oh, Monday through Thursday, occasionally on Fridays. Oh, you watched uh, uh, old episodes of David Letterman? Ding. You, cur- you are correct. Yeah. I right, watched cool. old ass, like 1984, 1986, kind of jumped around. They got all kinds of full episodes on YouTube. And... Um, I'm telling you, if you guys don't know this about me, it's it's a thing to know. Yeah. I was obsessed back then. I was late for school, not late, but tired for school every day because I stayed up for late night with David Letterman every freaking night. My friend Bill and I would talk about it, and every chance we did through the day because we were both obsessed, mm-hmm. I would mm-hmm. record it. I've mentioned this before with a little tape recorder next to my speaker on my TV. I would record it the same night I'm watching it, and then I would listen to it on my Walkman during the school day when the teachers oh were watching. Gosh. I would nice. sneak it in. I was that obsessed with it, and I haven't watched it in a lot of time. So for me to watch these old ones and see stupid pet tricks and watch, uh, yeah, who's the Larry Columbus? Bud Melman or Chris Elliott you know, popping yep. in there? Chris or, Elliott was uh, on last night, in fact, and so was so was awesome. is Larry Bud Melman. Watch. Watch Crispin Glover almost kick David Letterman in the head because he is is snorting too much coke before he comes out on stage. Or Andy Kaufman doing a fake little bit with... uh, with, uh, uh, Who was the wrestler? ah, Jerry Lawler? Jerry Jerry Lawler. Jerry Lawler. Yeah, Jerry Lawler. Right? Yeah, Jerry Lawler. That's it. Something about that sounds weird, but I think you're right. Mm -hmm. Um, Anyway. Oh, that's awesome. So I wasn't looking for specific interviews, but I was just like, oh, his pre-show stuff. Oh, there's listener mail or viewer mail. Then there was... um, he he did this thing where there was probably the top ten lists, of course. Oh yeah, of course, stuff. of course. He did the he did some a thing last night, or the thing I watched last night was uh, fish cleaning night, <laughs> and it's oh, really? where okay. yeah, it's where everybody in the audience got to have a fish and got to clean it, like open it and clean it. And for some reason, like <laughs> Mariel Hemingway came out and did was showing everyone how to do really? it. It's just it. weird. But anyway, it was the most star comfort. Movie, star 80, Mariel Hemingway. Yeah, and it was the most comfort food freaking night. of. Oh God, it cheered awesome. me It cheered me the F up. I slept better. I felt yeah. better. I was like, you know what? This is great. I'm, I'm, cool. I'm 12 again, 12 to 18, just consuming this like no nobody's business and, you know, and loving it. Now, you know, say what you want about 
uh, I, I know Dave can be a, a, a acquired taste for some people. He's not everyone's mm-hmm. favorite late night talk show host. But for me, sure. it's the pinnacle of the art. It never got better than yeah. that guy. So yep, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Love it. Will it float? Yeah. The uh, the, uh, the 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 what was it? Uh, women wearing armor, holding belt sanders, or something like that, where they get the sparks flying off of them. And yeah, yeah. I mean, he's chiefly responsible for me wanting to do any of the shit we're doing. Yeah. Like, this well, morning, your you know your humor uh, uh, definitely is inspired. Oh yeah, not a not a ripoff at all, but uh, inspired by um, the way uh, Letterman. Yeah, if you worked if you worked with letter or worked with if you watched Letterman at all, you'll hear me say things all the time that are reminiscent. Yeah, like yeah. there was a time in high school where I was full on. I just talked like him all day. Mm-hmm. It was a real <laughs> you'd, obsession. You'd talk to some imaginary friend named Paul. Yeah. Hey, isn't that right, Paul? Yeah, we uh, like Paul. Uh, 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 uh. Uh. Oh, he was killing me last night. He was saying some funny stuff. And by the way. Nobody was funnier on there than when Don Rickles would come on. Holy oh, shit. Oh, really? Oh, really? I get it. I, I need to go find an episode. I, oh, I love he's Rickles, so man. funny. He's so good with Dave. And also, uh, Charles Grodin's episodes are always good. Um, who was the other guest I just loved? Oh, uh, before, I guess he was kind of shamed after a while, but uh, 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 Albert, uh, George, uh, what was his name? Something Albert, the sports guy. Oh, Marv Albert. Marv Albert would come on all the time. And he was great yeah. on there. But then yeah, he didn't was. he get in trouble for biting somebody's he did. neck? He bit a woman on the back. Yeah. That's what it was, yeah. And that was the end of that. <laughs> I don't know why or like what the the situation was, but, uh, but that, yeah. That was the first example of an actual canceling, I feel like, where it really worked. Yeah, I think it was, yeah. Because people who right, claim to get had... canceled now, they don't really get canceled. They just do fine. In fact, they do better usually with the kind of controversy you Sometimes, get today. Sometimes, yeah. Yeah. Um, Maybe not so much Gina Carano, but uh, <laughs> but, but some of, most of them do. <laughs> that's true. She just hasn't parlayed it yet. She needs to figure out how to. She needs to turn it out. Yeah, exactly. Figure out how to turn that into like first, it's a little bit on Family Guy, yeah. and then, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. But also, oh, and anything, anytime Norm was on was amazing. Mm-hmm. So anyway, seek it out. There's a ton oh, of it. Norm YouTube's McDonald, new, yeah, YouTube sure. just got oodles and oodles of Letterman content. That is just there for you to watch. And if you didn't grow up with it, mm-hmm. I get it. It may not be your thing. Your guys, maybe your guys, mm-hmm. Conan. Hell, our guy is Conan. We like Conan. Conan's great. But there mm-hmm. was just something mm-hmm. then. I can't explain yeah. it. It was just a right moment, right time, right guy. Freaking loved him. Yeah. There'd be, I'd be curious to see, like, all right, which, you know, who wouldn't we have if we didn't have Letterman? Who, uh, who did he inspire into the medium that, um, uh, that, that, that we wouldn't have now or would be such a different person, just a different comedian if we didn't have Letterman. I'm not sure you'd have I'm I not mean, sure there Kimmel, would have Kimmel, Fallon. Well um, Yeah. I don't know. Fallon he's he's a little milk toast for me. I can't do I mm-hmm. I can't watch yeah, Fallon no, and he's, enjoy he's, it very he's much. A little too sanitized, but still I But think, like uh, the one I feel like Conan O'Brien's the best example of a yeah, guy who probably yeah. wouldn't have gotten the gig had it been any other way like if you had not mm-hmm. followed up with letterman who was already quirky and weird and different mm-hmm. and then you can come in and be also quirky weird and different in the same time slot like i feel like that paved the way for him um yeah, yeah. yeah i don't know any i can't think of anybody else a lot of comedians got their start on there or got their oh, first uh for sure jake johansson was you know. i'm hearing uh, myself coming back from your speakers all of a sudden oh that's weird still did you just switch something did no. you hit a button scott I okay now it's fixed whatever that was weird yeah, Discord. Thanks oh, yeah, a lot. Craig Kilborn, like originally on the Daily Show, very Letterman esque. Yeah. Oh yeah, he was. And yes, folks, I'll throw out one esque for you because you know it's been a while. It's like a little piece of candy for you guys. Yeah, it's been some time. As you well. like those little little pieces of candy every once in a while. Yeah, yeah. I like a little anyway. esque here and there. Yeah, also, uh, Carter and I put up that cooking video, and uh, you can go see it now. It's uh, us making <laughs> vegetarian jambalaya, and we did, I think, a pretty decent job. I've eaten it twice yesterday. So you did a great job. It. Yeah, that was a lot of fun to watch. Yeah. I need to. I am going to do a little short video, I think, and show you how to um, cut an onion. There's a really cool way to cut an onion. That um, please do. Yeah, I I'll, mean, basically, I'll feature it. I'll you feature know that hairy part. Yeah, keep the hairy part on there for a little bit because you actually want something to hold the onion together. Um, while you make other cuts into it. But basically, what it comes down to is you cut the uh, onion in half um, top to bottom, and I say bottom is the hairy part. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. And then then you take off the paper, 
Yeah. And then you you do some horizontal cuts, but don't go all the way through to the root. Okay. You do some uh, radial cuts, but don't go all the way through to the root. So basically, you are cutting you are basically making little onion fingers that are all connected at the root, right? You're just basically going this way and this uh, way and this way and this way. And then you go, choo, 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 and it is already oh. small diced. and, and uh, So it's like a, you cut it to be like a blooming onion sort of. To, yeah, to yeah, start yeah. With. Perfect example. Right, exactly. And then you get the little uh, hairy part. Pew, you yeah. toss it okay. into the compost bin. You know what? I like it. I'm yeah, going to do fun. it. Yeah, you should it's send funny. a little video of you doing it, and then I'll put it. I in still the video. do it. I'll still, yeah, I gotta figure out what we're gonna use the onion. But I throw onion into like I do scrambled eggs a lot, so I'll do. Uh, I'll put them in a little Tupperware and uh, save the onion for when I'm gonna have some scrambled eggs. Outside of Jambalaya, nobody here in this house like on- likes onions the way I do. I love them on everything. Oh, I love onions. Purple onion, or red onions, all of them. White on yellow onions, white onions. I don't even mind. Like a lot of people are like, well, if it's grilled, fine. I don't even. I don't. I like a burger with some raw mm-hmm. effing onions yes. on there, dude. Crispy. You know, you mm. can that that people are like. Oh, what about lettuce? Like, well, you give me a good crispy onion. That's the whole purpose of the lettuce is to just give some crunch because lettuce doesn't add any flavor. It just mm. adds crunch if you've got crunchy yeah. lettuce. Yeah. Give me an onion. I'll take that better because that adds flavor and yeah. crunch. Yeah, and it's just. Oh man, there's nothing like a fresh raw onion. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. When I was a kid, I would have fought myself on this. I would have had like yeah. two today fight. <laughs> right? Yeah. Because I hated yeah. them, dude. They were so gross. I do not eat onions like people eat apples. Whoever just said that? Yeah. Who said that? Oh gosh. Free rangers. Just a bite out of an onion like that, and and garlic. Give me, like, give me lots of garlic. Oh yeah, and there's uh, whether whether it's a a head, a bulb, or I found knob, a knob of garlic. Is that really? Is that's another way of saying it? Is that's knob. another way of saying the collection of cloves is a knob of garlic. <laughs> yeah, because Brian reached out and said, "Hey, it's a bulb," and I went, "Oh right, that's the word we were looking for." Because the clove yeah. is the section. We thought the little inside part. Yeah. We thought the clove was the whole unit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. In the video, it's, so we're learning. You know, we don't yeah, cook me yeah. and Carter that much. She makes, she does more than I do, but I don't do shit, as, as evidenced by the video. <laughs> you guys did a great job, though. Very good. Yeah, the uh, the the garlic uh, that that you put in there, even before the peppers and the onions, I say put the garlic in there and get let it. Um, uh, blossom like you basically start getting the the mm-hmm. stuff coming out of the garlic and then you put the onions and the celery and the peppers in to yeah to let it absorb that that uh, that garlic flavor. yeah we've talked off camera about this a little bit but the um what we were well we're, exactly that we were supposed to do the garlic the onions and kind of that's mm-hmm. it and maybe the oil yeah and oh, let all. those simmer for a while that's true yeah yeah, yeah. and then put the put the less flavorful uh, veggies in there the the crunch veggies you're your peppers, your uh, celery, etc. Someone in the chat says their husband is very allergic to onions. Oh wow! Oh, that sucks. How would you just uh, onions or other? Is, is onion one of the night? No, onions not a nightshade, is it? It's, oh, uh, I don't know. Is it? Maybe. I don't know. I don't think so. Onions hmm. are because that would be, yeah, that would be kind of cool, wouldn't it? Like a Harry Potter mm-hmm. kind of vibe. Okay, yeah. your nightshade vegetables uh, include mushrooms for sure. Uh, potatoes. Is yeah. a potato really a? I guess it is. Yeah. Um. Okay. Several different nightshade. Okay. So potato salad hash. <laughs> bell peppers. Oh. Uh, which we did yesterday or did in the video. Uh, baba ganoush. Oh, that's a dish though. Mm. Mm-hmm. Eggplant. Uh, mm-hmm. bruschetta. That's weird. Oh, they're saying what you can make out of some of this. Okay. Oh, sure. Right. Uh. Well. Anyway. <laughs> Don't uh, the pot. The bottom line is don't uh, don't eat things you're allergic to. You know, don't eat a, if you're allergic to an onion. Do not eat that shit. Oh, mushrooms are not. I thought for some reason I thought mushrooms were nightshade. So peppers, tomatoes, potatoes are. What's um, a what's a mushroom then? Is that that's a fungus? I guess it's just a fungus. Yeah. It's a fungus among us. When you think too hard about what mushrooms are, it can get kind of weird in your head. You know. Yeah, I don't think about it. I try not to because I love <laughs> mushrooms. They're amazing. I'm a huge yeah. fan. Yeah. Like I had pizza the other day with a, with some mushrooms all over that thing. I'd said two toppings minimum for this deal we got this coupon, and I said, you know what? Can I have double the mushrooms? How about that? <laughs> I'll do oh, that yeah. any day of the week, man. Any day, yeah. Anyway, right. from uh, YouTube.com/slash Scott Johnson is where the video resides. It's in the uh, the Monday show thing, so you guys can get it there. Uh, Brian, you remember yesterday that drunk guy called, or we thought it was a drunk guy. We didn't know. Yeah. Yeah, not yesterday, but a couple days ago. It was, it was a couple last days? week, wasn't it? Was it? Oh, time, dude. What even is it? <laughs> uh, but we got a follow-up. 
And here oh, cool. It, Excellent. Yep, here it is. Hey, I was the drunk caller, the annoying dude. I am not drunk. Um, I was playing One Piece Pirate Warriors or something, I don't remember. And I was drinking a hazy IPA like an annoying West Coast guy. Love the show, though. Bye. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I don't know what's weirder. His original call? I was call drinking a hazy that. IPA, but I definitely wasn't drunk <laughs> yet. <laughs> Isn't that IPA by definition? Aren't they all hazy? They're all kind of thick and hazy, aren't no. they? No. No? No. Well, I don't think. Uh, hazy, I think, is just uh, super hoppy. Am no. I right on that? That's uh, This is where, you know, going to the beer fest year after year. Um, so an indie pale ale is an IPA. Yeah. Yeah, it's a style. Hazy is a style of IPA. And is it the hops that makes it? Um, oh, unfiltered. Duh, of course, that's what makes it hazy. And so sure. in there, so chunks in there, like floating or what? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's fine. Yeah. So it's like pulp. Uh, it's like uh, They're not that thick though. I mean, it's not. It's not <laughs> like. It's not. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's. It is still. It is still not even close to a thickened liquid, just cloudy. It's like, um, have you ever had unfiltered? Uh, you probably haven't. I was going to say sake. Uh, no. Nope. There's your filtered sake and your unfiltered sake, and unfiltered sake kind of looks a little bit like milk. Mm. Um, but it still has this, uh, roughly the same consistency. Hazy IPA still has the same consistency as a, as a non-hazy IPA. Well, hazy sounds gross in a drink, but I'm glad that you guys have your hazy drinks and that you enjoy them. Sure. And, uh, yeah, more for other people because I'm give me that's right. Give me a stout or a gin and tonic, and that's all I'm. That's that's where I'm going. When they say India IPA, that just means India, like, India. Oh, India, India Pale Ale. Oh, I thought it meant like independent brewer or something like that. No, and I don't know um, why. I'm assuming it's uh, it originated in India. Yeah. Uh, India Pale Ale was originally an export beer shipped to India, which was under the control of the British East India Company until 1858. So it's not, it's not a pale ale that comes from India. It's a pale ale that was shipped to India. Got it. That's okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. That's interesting. interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah. I thought it was indie this whole time. An indie pale ale. Yeah, like, like uh, you know, not not part of a major label, bro. We're like an indie pale ale. Yeah, like that. Yeah. Not, yeah, Put some that of that indie pale ale in the middle. <laughs> yeah. Definitely not like, uh, you know, indie, bad dates, not like that indie. <laughs> not that right. that's a problem, right. but, you know, whatever. Yeah. Uh, it's usually like when I when I show up at the beer fest and I see the the uh, four pitchers in front of me from any brewery, mm -hmm. um, the IP is is not the first one I go to. And I'll probably pick, I will pick the, the stout, then the brown ale, then the amber yeah. um, before I go with an IPA. All right. Some some advice as well, everybody. Yes, <laughs> well, for the, that advice preference. That's just where I go. Okay, uh, yeah. those, are the, those are the order. That's the order that I go for. You don't have to be me. like Brian, but it wouldn't hurt you if you were. Right? <laughs> you do whatever yeah. you want to do. Um, this world would be such a better place if everybody was like me. It just would be. It would be. Uh, We'd solve all yeah, our issues. Line. This stuff in the bottom Middle East, line. gone in the Middle East. No exactly. issues. Exactly. We'd be solved. also, everybody be wearing Hawaiian shirts. We'd all be laid back. I'm not yeah. wearing a Hawaiian shirt today because it's a little cooler. But, We'd wear a silly you know, hat occasionally. That wear kind a silly of stuff. hat. It's a yeah. funny hat, Scott. Sorry, um, funny hat. Sorry. Funny hat. Uh oh, yeah. here comes a, a Jericho going. Here comes Funny Hat again to take another award <laughs> home. Hey, look, it's Funny Hat Guy. <laughs> <laughs> you again? <laughs> you on the. You're on this podcast as well? Yeah. <laughs> but where is Chris Jericho? Oh, I'm sure he's fine. He's doing things. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Yeah. Check this out. Yesterday yeah. is history today. We're going to give you a little history. All right. <laughs> okay. Today on this day, historical events of the cool. day. April 16th. Things that happened on April 16th. Yep. Uh, in the year 1457 BC. Uh, or what do they call it now when they don't want to be religious? It's uh, instead of BC and AD, it's... Um, Oh, uh, I, I, oh shit! Chat, someone in the chat. BCE, is that right? BCE, okay. Yeah, before Common before Area, before Common Era, era. and Common oh, Era. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's a new way. I just I've hear a lot. That. Of, I didn't know that was the reason for it. That totally makes sense. It's like, well, I'm, I'm agnostic. I'm an atheist. I don't, don't I don't believe in BC. <laughs> yeah, I think they just are taking Jesus out of the timeline. I don't know, but anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in 15, or sorry, 1457 BC, uh, Egyptian forces of Thutmose III defeat a large Canaanite coalition under King of Kadesh. First battle recorded with a reliable account. That's wow. A, that's an important thing to note because yeah. 
I, not that we'd like war, but you know, the first war <laughs> documented war in history. Yes, right, right. You Which know? means there was a war documentarian, probably for the first time. Because if right. you have it, if it was, if they weren't documented uh, reliably before, that means you didn't have a reliable war documenter. And yeah, that ex- that exactly. That's one hundred percent it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In 1705 A.D., so we're jumping way ahead, okay, on this day, Queen Anne of England knighted scientist Isaac Newton, which made him Sir Isaac Newton, at oh, Trinity yeah. College. Yeah, that was a big deal. He got hit on the head with an apple, and then they said, well, you're a, right. knight, you're a knight now. True, yeah. true fact. We didn't have gravity until that apple landed on uh, Sir Isaac Newton's head. And yeah, then they yeah. said, oh, wait, stuff falls down. There must be a reason. It's the earth is magnetic. That's right. Uh, here's here's my one of my favorites. Uh, this one here is 1900. The year is 1900. 1900. Uh, <laughs> J- uh, U.S. Post Office issues its first stamp booklets. This contained 12, 24, or 48 cent. Or sorry, 12, 24, or 48 different two cent stamps. That's back when stamps were two cents. Oh. Wow. 1900, yeah. baby. I don't know what it is now. They're still ridiculously cheap, actually. If you think about it, they have been very resistant to uh to uh what do you call it uh, uh what is it when prices go up uh, uh inflation. inflation inflation stamps are incredibly resistant to inflation they're still stupid cheap by today's standards i don't know how we mm-hmm. do it i we have to be losing money on those there's no way like mm-hmm. i can send a thing like a little piece of paper i can send to one of you guys in kentucky mm-hmm. for what 38 cents i can't remember what i don't know what it is now we get those forever stamps i honestly don't know how much I couldn't even. I, I probably wouldn't even be within ten cents of the actual price of a, of what a stamp is. Is it thirty eight? I thought they were higher, like forty five or something. Well, they might be. I, I don't know. I know oh, they're under a buck. Slide and... slide one two three four five six seven eight says, "My lord, it is not thirty eight cents." Forty eight says so Doctor Calhoun. It? What is it then? That's Lassard, not that much. Sixty three. Is that yeah, clearly clearly nobody knows? It's still yeah, and everyone here is saying all these numbers. Yeah, it's uh, like uh, we have Rain Man in the in the chat room right now. But is, uh, n- none of them. IMAC head. And nobody's saying the same number either. Yeah, like, it's all it's all stupid. Lasarge sixty three, Dirtbox Fingers is, is talking pence. It looks yeah, like yeah. TV's Travis sixty to seventy. Seventy two. So if only this was available information that was available online. Even I don't even know if uh, A L E X A could tell me the price of a stamp right now. Let's ask. Let's ask really quick. Yeah, let's see if she'll know. Brian will mute part of this. Yep, there you go. Postage rates. <laughs> Why United Kingdom? We're in America! Yeah, this isn't... What? A, uh, come on, Amazon. What a load. Okay, DJ Stangle. <laughs> Here it is, 68 <laughs> cents. It's 68 cents. DJ Stangle, it's 73. Just Googled it. <laughs> TV's Travis says 68. Okay. Oh, it's because it's going up to seventy three. Yeah. Uh, if you go to okay, if you go to USPS.com, they have it listed right there. Letter stamp, standard size, rectangular envelope, sixty eight cents. And yes, it is about to go up to seventy three. That is correct. Mm-hmm. I still say that's insanely low. It is, it is. It is ridiculous that I can. Yeah. I mean, within reason, you can't put anything big or heavy in there, or else you're gonna need more stamps. But still. Uh, right. Like the fact that I'm saying, take this folded piece of paper. Mm-hmm. And take it all the way from Salt Lake City, Utah, mm-hmm. to Lexington, Kentucky, and please do it in a timely fashion, and mm-hmm. also have it there without bending it, and have multiple employees of various <laughs> places Wait, have to have deal it with it and sort hand it and carry it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like it's just such a to me, it's strange. And every time rates mm-hmm. go up internationally, we all freak out about it. But I'm like, well, of course they do. Of course they go up. This stuff mm-hmm. is insane. How does anybody do it for this cheap? Mm-hmm. Anyway. Uh, and then finally, in the year 2003. In the year 2003. <laughs> the Treaty of Ascension is signed in Athens, admitting 10 new member states into the European Union. Congratulations, mm. guys. You did it. You did it. Cool. Cool. Uh, that's to the look at today's uh, history, today in history. Brian, we're going to do the awesome. news now, and the news is this right here. <laughs> The news is brought to you by transported to a weird place. A girl kills the first person she meets and then teams up with three strangers to kill again. Name the movie. Tina's favorite movie of all time. The Wizard of Oz. Uh, incorrect. This is. Uh, <laughs> oh, wait, I didn't write it down. Now I don't remember. Hold on. 
It's the Wizard of Oz. No. Oh, yeah, it Dorothy is. Dorothy kills the first person she meets and then teams up with three strangers to kill again. Is that right? Transported to a weird place, Oz, a yeah, girl, yeah, Dorothy, yeah. kills the first person she meets, Wicked Witch, and then teams up with three strangers, Tin Man, Cowardly Lion, Scarecrow, to kill again, Wicked yeah. Witch 2. Yep, you're right. This is it. <laughs> I couldn't remember. I always forget to write them down, so sometimes Please, I throw tell myself. tell me how I'm wrong one more time. Tell no. me, say it one more time, I dare you. You're totally correct. <laughs> totally correct. Uh, all right, a customer shoots... <laughs> A Chipotle <laughs> worker over guacamole dispute in Michigan. Oh, oh no! Geez. Come on now. Yeah, because uh, I bet I know what this is about. Because Qdoba gives you the guac for free. Qdoba charges you an upcharge. Yeah, they do. I don't know if this is really why, but uh, it's probably not yeah. why. But I also I don't like that they do. A Chipotle employee in Southfield, Michigan, was shot in the leg by a customer Friday night. Uh, police sources told Fox Two, their local affiliate there. The shooting stemmed from an argument over guacamole. The shooting took place at a uh, Chipotle in Evergreen Road. Blah, blah, blah. I don't care about that. Quote, it was loud. And then we just all ran out, says Michael Beals, a customer who captured the incident on video. Ooh, do we have this on video? Oh, that would be great. Yeah. Uh, well, anyway, the victim, 20-year-old man, is in stable condition. According to a release from Southfield Police, he was transported to a hospital where he is being treated for the non-threatening injury. Good. Thank goodness. I was just eating my bowl or eating a bowl and heard shouting. And then I looked over. They're arguing. One of the customers, or sorry, workers, went to the back. I don't know why, but when he was in the back, the customer walked around the counter, tried to grab his food and put it in a bag, said Thomas Huber, another witness. Then the employee came back and they started fighting. And then we heard a gunshot. And then we just ran out as quick as we could. Ooh, jeez. Wow. Pretty intense, right? Yeah. Um, let's see if there's video. I want to see trying to come up with a good pun for you know a fight and chipotle and uh, it's hard right it's hard yeah, to mm, hard to know chipotle melee no chip <laughs> chipotle melee is not bad it's May not bad it's not huff po uh, level though there's something there's uh yeah it's not as easy oh yeah, there's the video oh what'd you find did you find video yeah it's just it's on this link but they cut away when the shot happens oh well that's good. boring i want the dirty details man the guys oh, i don't want to i don't want to watch somebody get shot in a chipotle well he's okay you know he's... it's bad enough watching what comes out at me after i ate a chipotle let alone uh oh speaking of which like there's that. a video going around of a guy who tried to intervene in a hard jack a carjacking mm -hmm. and the guy the car getting jacked was like a a big truck with a giant grill on the front and all this. Mm, mm. And the guy could not stop him, tried to. And then the guy who stole the car peeled away, looped around, and then came back around and just slammed into this dude that tried to stop oh, him. Oh, God. And really? And sent this guy flying. I don't know if he survived or I don't know what happened, but I don't even know why I got to see that. Somebody sends me these videos. You guys send me stuff sometimes. That mm. was a listener who sent that. Said, oh, you won't believe this. Did he survive? Good. Maniacal Industries? That's good. I don't like to think that I saw a killing on video. Ah, uh, no, I don't. Uh, I'm not ugh. into it. Not a snuff I don't, film. I definitely don't need to see that. Yeah. I didn't even, I avoided faces of death as a teenager when everybody else was scrambling to mm -hmm. see it. Even though we know it's not real, but still the time was like, no, I don't need to watch people dying or, or people in tremendous pain or, or. I mean, at the time we thought it was real because we were stupid, you know, mm -hmm. we were all a bunch of dumb <laughs> teens and they told us it was real. So we believed it, but. Mm-hmm. Faces of death. So stupid, dude. And I know these exist. I know actual filmed deaths exist. I don't want to see it. I'm good. I don't need to see it. No. Yep. I'm fine. Yeah. Don't send it to mm -hmm. me. Oh, I can watch people die in movies. That's no problem, Stephanie. Just die left and right mm -hmm. in movies. Don't Yeah, because it's all fake. Yeah, it's all yeah. fake. None of that's real. Feces of death. All right, Icor. Slow down there, buddy. Uh, let's get into uh, the, this story. We're about to get an NHL team. We've talked about this a little on the show. Oh yeah, right. Mm -hmm. uh, turns out it's the Arizona Coyotes. Uh, they're they're uh, or Coyotes, however you want to say it. Yeah, that's an interesting thing too. Like, uh, uh, what will be the official pronunciation? Because uh, I say Coyote. Your your first inclination was to say Coyote. Mm -hmm. Coyotes is very. Very much that's what I was brought up to say. It was Coyotes, mm -hmm. not Coyote. Coyote. Watch out for the Coyote. The the talk is they're changing the name anyway, so it won't matter. But um, Oh, there are no Zs in Coyote. No, yeah, no Zs. Uh, you got to do it. put it at the end. Coyotes. Coyote, yeah. <laughs> I don't like Coyotes. 
That'll be a title. Zygotes. It'll be it as well. <laughs> Except that's still not. Uh... There's a whole bunch of proposed names. Doesn't, doesn't have enough. We just don't know yet what they're going to do. But anyway, they're relocating to, uh, here. Uh, this was, by the way, put in our Discord by Sunbun. It's a good reminder that if you're in our Discord and you find mm. news stories you think are worthy for the show, mm -hmm. then you can post them in there. I do check those every day. Uh, Arizona Coyotes or Coyotes players were informed <laughs> Friday that the team is relocating to Utah. Sources told ESPN, confirming a report by the Phoenix Sports. Oh, uh, this just in from Andy. Uh, Scott, it is pronounced coyote. 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 Machete. Coyote. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Randy. All right. Uh, thank you, Randy. Back to your back to your your uh, pronunciation hole. Uh, Coyotes <laughs> uh, manager, current manager Bill Armstrong met with players ahead of the game against the Edmonton Oilers to confirm what had been rumored last week. The NHL is working to facilitate a sale. To uh, Ryan, the dude that owns the Jazz right now, and Ashley Smith, owners of the Jazz, the Coyotes will begin playing their next season. So we will have an NHL team this next season. One thing they didn't say was, I assume they're just going to use the Delta Center. They that's we do all sorts of ice stuff there, and it's plenty. Yeah, big. I would expect uh, expect so. That's obviously that's where the Jazz play, right? Yeah, yeah. So we've probably got um, a layer of ice underneath the uh, the hardwood floor. Yeah, they used to do that. They maintain. They used to do it for the uh, IHL team we had, the Eagles or whatever oh, okay. they were. I was gonna say, do, do is, uh, does BYU or um, uh, Utah State have a hockey team? Oh, University like of Utah, college hockey. No, they yeah, have, I'm sorry, University of Utah. Yeah. yeah, they don't have. As far as I know, they don't. Um, maybe okay. they do, but the uh, they'd have to do it in in the city. And if I guessed, if I yeah. had to guess, probably Delta Center. But we also have. The Grizzlies Arena, which is our current IHL team, and mm -hmm. the Grizzlies Arena with Z's, double Z's, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> they uh, that was built for the Olympics in 02 uh, for mm -hmm. hockey, so that's why we even have that facility. And so my guess is they could do that one if they wanted. And that one's closer to me, and I wouldn't. That'd be great because I'd love to just like pop over for games and. I, don't, I like hockey a lot. Have I mentioned that before? Hockey's fun yeah. for me to watch. Yeah, it I don't, is fun. It's an exciting, like, it is a fast-moving, exciting game. Yeah. It's super expensive to go yeah. see it live here in Denver, and so we don't, but... Uh, yeah. Um, I am hoping. I don't know who the coyote, like. uh, the Coyotes, Coyotes, are currently uh, rivaled with anybody, but I hope it's the Avalanche. You guys are probably just... Uh, <laughs> we're probably a shit team. We have the Detroit Red Wings, as I think is our, our big rivalry, if I if I remember correctly. I don't know. Yeah. Somebody else from uh, uh, Denver can chime in for a while because it was they, they're the ones that we battled to, uh, the first time we almost made it a Stanley Cup. It was the uh, Red Wings that kept us out. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that rivalry still continues to this day or if we have a, another bigger rival. But, when I, um, that's funny because when I play NHL, whatever the year is, the video game, mm -hmm, I will mm -hmm. play, by default, I will either play the Avalanche or the Red Wings because I just oh, really? funny. like those two teams. Do they, does somebody, in a little pixelated dude in the crowd, throw a uh, an octopus onto the ice uh, during a Red Wings game in the in the video game? <laughs> no, no. Okay. As far as I know, I don't remember that ever happening. <laughs> um, I just downloaded the new one, in fact, but I wonder, so I guess that would mean the next EA game will feature the Utah, whatever we call them and that's just not yeah. been decided yet so we'll see yeah that would be a good submit your ideas now for the utah hockey team let's see yeah. what everyone comes they're already up doing it they got a whole like survey out the owners of the jazz have put out a survey they're asking people what they want um nice some the the leader right now i think is the blizzard because I, honestly the best one's already taken for mountain mm -hmm. teams and that's avalanche that's so much better than blizzard but mm -hmm. we'll take blizzard mm -hmm. Um, what was the other one? The the streak or something? I can't remember. I think it should be the the shredded carrots Jello salad is what we should call them. <laughs> there you go. Right, the Utah Jello shredded carrot Jello salads. Yeah. By the way, Denver Pioneers, the the uh, the the DU team, uh, hockey team, Pioneers took uh, the the title, uh, the national hockey championship title. Oh, very nice. Last night, I think. Well done. Or well two days done. ago, so it was a Sunday night that they did. So congratulations to the to our local uh, college hockey team. Yeah, I like that. Oh, I like it also. I course the Utah funeral potatoes. That's the Utah good. Utah funeral potatoes is really good. Yeah. yeah. Someone else had said bees. We already have bees. Yeah, you've got the the buzz. The right? buzz. The, yeah, they yeah. used to be the bees. They changed them to the buzz, but there's just too, there's already bee shit. 
Yeah. Um, there is uh, the other one that people like is the Yeti, but I don't like the sound. I like Salt Lake Yeti. I don't like Utah hmm. Yeti. It sounds weird. Oh, yeah, no. Salt Lake Yeti. That's good. I like that because it's icy. It's cold. Yeah. It's very, you can, you know, the mascot. the mascot writes itself. Mm-hmm. Like what do you got? I don't even know. Costume from the Matterhorn and uh, Disneyland, you get your your set. What is the Avalanche uh, mascot? You guys have one, right? What? But what is it? Is it just a? It's not just a dude, is it? It's not a dude. What? I don't know if we have a mascot. Maybe you don't. Uh, We have to, right? I mean, the Uh, Jazz has a bear, so obviously you can just kind of do whatever you want. But um. Oh yeah, of course it's Bernie the Saint Bernard. Yes, we have a Saint Bernard who. uh, Okay. Who walks around and pours uh, uh, bourbon uh, brandy out of his little his little neck neck barrel? Oh, nice! <laughs> I, <laughs> I like that. Oh, the SLC punks. Yeah. That's a great idea. Paleo Rocco. I like that. The SLC punks. Mm-hmm. They're never going to do it. SLC punks is great. That's a it's a nice uh, reference. Yeah, there. and you could yeah. do two Z's instead of the S at the end. It would totally work. <laughs> right, punks. Anyway, more on that as we come up to it, but I am looking forward to it because I like hockey. Yeah. Uh, speaking of other games, uh, a Yu-Gi-Oh player. <laughs> I love this story. Okay. This is a great story. A Yu-Gi-Oh player. Is we're Yu-Gi-Oh talk- still a thing? It totally <laughs> is. Those cards I apparently are... Oh, uh, wow. Not as I big just as... like doing that to people who, who goes, Pokemon Go still, people actually still play Pokemon Go? In the case of Yu-Gi-Oh, I don't know if it's ever going to be as big as Pokemon, but I think it still has its people, right? Somebody, I think so, yeah. Somebody's yeah. into it. Anyway, you go, Yu-Gi-Oh, you go. Yu-Gi-Oh player quit a tournament because the opponent smelled bad. <laughs> welcome, welcome to Yu-Gi-Oh tournaments. Is it your first time here? Yeah. Or any of these things, man. Of course, or a uh, Comic Con, or uh, <laughs> any of that. BlizzCon, yeah. any of it. If you wonder why BlizzCon yeah. was always so cold, why the air conditioning was blaring so hot, it's because everyone stunk so bad they had to do whatever they could. Anyway, the real reason there isn't an Intertracular anymore. Yeah, let's be honest. <laughs> you guys all reeked. Okay. <laughs> why is there no? It was actually it wasn't even Scott's decision. It was Snowbird. Uh, no, sorry, can't, uh, can't have maybe. you up here anymore. It takes, uh, you guys are only here for four days, and it takes like a month to get the funk out of the uh, clip clop. Yeah, no. they uh, called and said, "Hey, this is the clip clop. You guys reek. Please don't come here." <laughs> well, a Yu-Gi-Oh card tournament smelled so bad that one female player decided to drop out because she could not stand it anymore. Personal hygiene mm. is always important, but some. Gaming conventions and tournaments have earned a reputation for their players not exactly showing up fresh. Uh, over the years, we've seen plenty of instances where athletes smell uh, causes backlash, and it's not limited to the United States. Earlier this month, the Japanese tournament went off the rails when a player's smell was so bad it made a competitor quit. Well, the situation became public <laughs> on uh, a thread on, I'll just call it Twitter. Yeah. Because I refuse to call it X. I'm sick of trying formally, to... Twitter formerly known as X. Yeah. <laughs> uh, where a player expressed concern uh, for one of the women competing after revealing it, uh, it was her first Yu-Gi-Oh event and was under the impression she got clobbered. However, the female player would set the matter straight, revealing she left because of the third-rate duelist with fourth-rate hygiene. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Third-rate duelist with fourth-rate <laughs> hygiene. Pretty hardcore, man. Sometimes the best defense is, the, is a strong offensive smell. Yeah. Says, however, the female player, uh, let's see, where was that? Oh, I left halfway through because I couldn't stand the smell, she said. Uh, not that I'm sad about losing it all or anything, she says. In the comments, the players elaborate on the disgust, uh, explained that the smell was no laughing matter and urged the duelist to take better baths. <laughs> uh, oh, no. <laughs> uh, she says, there are stinky female duelists, but the men in the class are in a class of their own, she says. Well, she went, oh, she went hard, dude. She went hard. Yeah. Anyway, don't. And then uh, that person, uh, then that that the uh, the player drove home, rode home in my lift, apparently, because that's uh, yeah, that is what they do. And it never left. I try not to offend anybody, but man, sometimes I cannot. As after somebody gets out of the car, sometimes I just can't get the windows open fast enough to to air things out. Do you ever have it Seinfeld style where it won't leave? It just stays there. No, fortunately, no. Thank God. That's good. <laughs> Just rush. Yeah, I've got a I've got a little can of uh, Febreze. I just kind of, I know it masks it, but it also does a little bit of um, like enzyme or some not enzymes, but there's some sort of bacterial killer thing, and uh, spray that right on the the offending area. Uh, do you have not a it's, Do you have a limit? Like if it was so bad, you would be like, uh, "Sir, I can really I can't go on." Please. I've I, I've I've 
almost reached that limit. I had a passenger who smelled really bad and it always feels like those are the rides that are 40 minutes to the other side of town or something. Yeah. And it was it was a situation where I was actively trying to breathe as shallow as I could to not take yeah. smell up my nose to take any of that smell and uh but I can't imagine it being worse than that. Yeah. Um and I can't imagine like hurting somebody's feelings by saying I'm sorry, you, you smell too bad I can't drive you anywhere. Yeah, I'd almost have to come up with other. I'll, I'll suffer. I'll suffer. You know, I don't want. I don't want anybody to feel. You could just I don't go. Want to make anybody sad. You could just go. Oh, my car's about to explode. You, you should get out. Run, run for cover. It's gonna explode. <laughs> exactly. Oh no, my car stopped. <laughs> oh well, I guess you know. Uh, yeah. I guess you got to get out now, and then you spare their feelings, and you know, Stephanie. That's. Uh, it's funny you say that. I. I don't have one in my car and I should she suggests a, car, a jar of vapor rub and just put it in your nose which is what coroners do sometimes or, or people who yeah. uh, police when they have to walk into a really smelly house Tina has done that when she's had to go in somebody's house um, that has not been taking care of themselves or the house or whatever and it just right. reeks in there she just yeah. goes dab dab and all you smell is Vicks vapor rub and I probably should do the same thing yeah, you could do that just have a little a jar yeah. there handy I do that yeah, with I, um, uh, this stuff right here I got a bottle of peppermint oil, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I don't use this to cover smells, but I use it to, um, uh, if I just need, like, clear my sinuses yeah, or whatever. Yeah, just a little, yeah, what do you do? Would put it in your, like, on your filtrum? You just dab it right here. There you go, right. a little dab it right under the head. Yep. Yeah, now cool. I smell, it's just a lovely pepperminty vibe, you know? Nice. Lovely. Yeah. Yes. Glad I did that, actually. Well, feels good that's, now. Uh, just a lesson to all those Yu-Gi-Oh players out there: take a little bit of uh, Scott's essential peppermint oils with you, and go dab dab. That's and right. You can, then you can play against anybody. I don't even know where this came from. Maybe it was a hint. Maybe maybe you can't. Somebody sent you that article because it was. A hint. Oh, you mean the peppermint oil? The peppermint oil. Yeah. You're saying. My wife, maybe. <laughs> I don't know why I have this. I didn't buy it. I don't know where it came from. <laughs> Anyway, that's going to do it for today's news. We're going to take a break. When we come back from this break, we'll have Dan Dan, the tabletop man here. Um, I got a, a question for him uh, cool. regarding his business, but also we got a bunch of big news about a very, very popular and influential game that is now coming to tabletop as well as yeah. getting a sequel in video game form. So we're going to talk all about that in a second, but Brian's got to play a song first. It's uh, I'm required to do this. Um, this is a pop artist named uh, Isold Fair, like you know the old uh, Tristan Isold or Isold uh, Isold. I think it is Tristan Isold. Mm -hmm. um, this is a brand new single from uh, Isold called "Strip Away." Um, as as Brian patiently waits for uh, the people in uh, chat to clear to uh, clear up how I'm pronouncing or clarify how to pronounce the name. Mm -hmm. um, this is a 20 year old musician her, making her debut single as a solo artist. Really, really good stuff. So a little bit more, a little bit more pop, but with some kind of strings and orchestral uh, uh, bits to it. Really love it. Uh, anyway, she's got uh, two videos for the song, a New York story version directed by Jake Mosco shot in New York and a Los Angeles version directed by Jared Schwartz and shot in Los Angeles. So she's not only uh, making some great music, but also doing some pretty clever stuff with the videos. Um, this old fair, uh, here is the song. It is called Strip Away. Can't have your boy going around kicking people in their testicles. Nudity. And we're back. Who is that one more time? Yeah, that is uh, Isolde Fair and a brand new song called Strip Away. Check it out and maybe even go and watch the video on YouTube. Yeah, why wouldn't you? Oh, damn it. Hold on. <laughs> That's such a dumbass. All right. <laughs> I called let's, Dan directly. Let's add Dan to the call, but... Ah, we delete Brian from the problem is I was, now. I was just chatting with him and I had that up still and... That looked like where I was, and you know, was. <laughs> these Discord chats, they get confusing. All right, uh, here we go. Here's a tangent for you. Be careful, may cause drowsiness. Yes, indeed. Dan Dan, the tabletop man, joining us from North Carolina. Hello, Dan, how are you? Greetings, programs, and how are you guys today? Good, good. We're good. You know, we finally Excellent. got to see Tron and, uh, for Film Sack, mm -hmm. and it would, uh, they've multiple times greetings programs in there. And, uh, yeah, thought it of makes you. me smile every time I every time somebody said that I was like, oh, well, it's, like Dan. it's so great. Yeah, it's like yeah, yeah, it used to be like a little Easter egg that I love to say, and now uh, you know, with 
resurgence of its popularity again over the last 10 to 15 years or whatever it's been. So it's pretty are you, cool. Are you, uh, I didn't, I guess I've never asked you this, but you're a big time old fan of Tron. You like that stuff? Oh yeah. I loved it when it first came out. Like, cause you know, being a little kid in, in the early eighties, it was just kind of like, Oh my God, did you see that movie? Like now you look at it and you kind of laugh, but it was still so cutting edge for, for back then. Oh yeah. You know, as far as I'd you know, it. being a, a, a computer geek course you I, know, you just unapologetically love that 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 movie and i'm really Nothing excited wrong, about the new that. one i rewatched the the, the uh, legacy not long ago mm. um I'll, i'm always down for more tron bring it in bring it mm-hmm. on mm-hmm. absolutely there's so a scott i've got a, uh, there are a a bunch of well i wouldn't say a bunch but there's a, a bunch of uh college hockey teams in utah they're all club teams there's no d1 or d3 teams in utah right but there's a bunch of club and club hockey is is has a huge like I don't want to say it's it's a surgence, I guess, because it's not a resurgence, because it's just something that's up and coming in the U.S. now, where you have your elite of the elite, like Division One, Division Three. There's not really a lot of Division Two teams, and those are, you know, that's your, you're talking Division One. You're talking about your Michigan's, yeah. your BC, Denver just won a national title, mm-hmm. but club hockey people. Uh, people just love hockey. I mean, uh, Brian, you've got a local like, minor league team that you go to watch, or do you go to an Avalanche all the time? No, um, we the the minor league that we are the the. The team that we go see all the time is the Mammoth, Colorado Mammoth, which is lacrosse. The um, okay. if we were going to go to hockey, probably we would go see the DU Pioneers, the winning, the team, uh, the, the right. national champions, nope. um, uh, because we can't afford to go see the <laughs> Colorado yeah. Avalanche. It's yeah, expensive. The pro teams price themselves out like crazy, even around really here do. where it's always been traditionally yeah. cheap. They've kind of starting to price themselves out of, of things that the Canes. But the uh, yeah. but just going to watch a game is just so like thrilling and exhilarating that even like and especially when you're talking about college games mm-hmm. the, uh they're you know these schools are finding that even the club level you know they have a division one two and three of the club level that people will fill those arenas and they can just yeah. make money on gear and and food and everything else and it's just it's just a huge income for or just just raising awareness of that school and stuff so you've got all these co- pro, uh, club programs so i mean you've got like utah has one byu uh Weber State, Utah State, Westminster, Utah Valley, Southern Utah, and Utah Tech all have mm. club hockey. Teams. Oh, I didn't know that. So, yeah. yeah, Utah Valley uh, is um, close. I could go to games if I wanted. Well, I guess I go to University of Utah. Does the U of U have them or no? No club team there. Uh, uh, U of U. Um, I thought you. I thought U of U did. No, it says the Utes. That's the U. Oh, U-U, that is U-U, them. Right? Yeah, they got it. Easy for me to say. Yeah, the Utah. The yeah, and they're uh, they're U-U. actually pretty good uh, in in D one club. Okay. All right. That's cool. I didn't know that. I mean, so our IHL team, the Grizzlies, I don't know where they ended up this year. I know they didn't win much. I think they kind of just sat there. <laughs> um, <laughs> and they'll probably move Aww. once the big – a lot of times uh, a lot of times they won't keep the same – you know, big cities won't keep the uh, a minor league team in the same city when they do have a, a, a pro team. So if there is like – you know, if there's another fairly big city around the area, they'll end up moving over there. Because uh, yeah, that happens that, a lot of times. That was my question. My question because I'm looking on their website and it just they've got a big thank you banner up for the season and and all that. But I'm I'm guessing if this when this deal goes through, it's not if now. It's it's just when they probably get moved. And that's a little bit of a bummer. Mm-hmm. They've been here for a long time. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah but people usually don't care because if you can get a pro team, uh, you know they forget about those minor leagues pretty quick. <laughs> you know. <Yeah. laughs> I can see that. Uh, which is really crazy how that, that all developed in the last like two months where usually you have to wait two years before a team moves. And now it's like, uh, see ya. Yeah. See Arizona. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This, this Ryan guy's got so much money. He's probably overpaying. That's fine. Whatever. I just, I've always felt like we we deserve more pro teams here. And I don't know why we don't have them. Our, mm-hmm. The fan base for the Jazz mm-hmm. are freaks, dude. They are hardcore. <laughs> I've never met a more hard, seen a more hardcore sports fanatics people don't like playing here the bulls used to complain because uh for an away game in in salt lake because we're dicks like just loud (laughs) the loudest crowds there i think every year they get ranked as like some of the like most loud annoying like you're trying to do free throws and they just are the balloons and the shit and the i know there's some new rules with that but Anyway, uh, I'm excited about this. And I'm sure they've I got like plenty it. of room for hockey. And I'm sure they have, like, you ever see, like, Disney on ice in that same arena and stuff? Because oh, yeah. they'll just use, generally, it's a regulation, uh, you know, ice surface. So probably not a hard thing for them to put into that arena either. Yeah. Plus, they just got right. the name back to Delta, which is how we all, you know, no one called it Vivint Home Security Arena 
or any of that <laughs> bullshit. So now that Delta has it back, it just all feels like everything's coming back. It's good. I'm I'm pretty happy yeah. about it. Uh, all right, let's. Uh, we didn't poison Jordan. That's a myth. <laughs> Is that, is that really something that... Uh, that yes, that... it's in the documentary for, you know, that five day or five, oh, yeah, whatever yeah. it is. He, <laughs> there's a whole thing where he got deathly ill on during one of the playoff games. He still scored 68 points or some shit like that. He still yeah. won the game away. Um, I mean, it blew everybody's mind how well he played. But the rumor was that fans delivered pizzas to the players and that they poisoned the pizzas to make them sick. Utah fans to the Bulls players. Oh, it was never verified or how proved. Could you? It was never proved. <laughs> Look, I'll admit two things. One, everybody here still thinks that Jordan pushed off on uh, what's his name to win that final game. And I'm sure he did because that's all he ever did and never got called for it. I'm a, I'm a, a starving Knicks fan who had to who had to grow up with Jordan. And my wife is a huge, you know, she went to UNC, so of course Jordan can do no wrong. And I freaking yeah. hate him because I'm a Knicks fan. Yeah, no, you gotta you gotta pick your battles, right? But the, in the documentary, they made a pretty good case for he didn't. Like they have a camera angle where it doesn't look like he pushed off on him. It doesn't matter. People here are just set in their they're locked in, man. It's a mm. cult. The the anti that game Jordan pushing off cult is strong as ever, <laughs> and that was what thirty five th- years ago or something. Wow. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Uh, you know when it comes to Jordan, you can you can yeah. There's it's definitely there's a lot of things in this world where there's a dividing line. Either either you like uh, Monty Python and Holy Grail or you hate it. Jordan, yeah. you either love or you hate it. <laughs> yeah. you know, those are there's definitely dividing lines with certain subjects. Yeah. I mean, you can't. There's no denying his dominance and his you know all that. It's yeah. just. It's it, that isn't the issue. The issue is do you hate them or not? Uh, if you really love your teams or not. Anyway, uh, Dan, I got a quick question about medicine before we move on to this uh, good news that we have to share today. Good news. Uh, Dan's, of course, a, a working dude in the uh, in the world of medicine and uh, distribution of said medicine, pharmaceuticals, and so on. Some would, some would call me a pharmacist. Some would call you a pharmacist. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but would they be right? Is that is that yeah. <laughs> would they be accurate? They would be, they would be uh, very very okay. correct. Right. Okay, good. So um, I still have never seen you in like the white coat. I really need to see that. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh man, I hated wearing a white coat. I used to get in trouble all the time because I refused to wear a white coat. I oh, hated it. You rebel, dude. Rebel without a cause. Yeah. Do you ever um, do you ever bring home the little uh, metal spatula that you use to like push pills into uh, uh, into <laughs> bottles and like to make like little tiny pancakes? <laughs> so. Uh, yes and no. So the reason why, uh, so I'll, I'll tell you why we used to get them so many of them that like, you couldn't possibly keep as like you get them for free from drug reps and, and companies yeah. would just send them because like, as you're counting pills, they would have like their little logo right there. Be the like, logo, sure. there. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. So just let, like, I'm going to be like, Oh, you know what, you know what we need to give people more of? Uh, chlorothromycin. We need more biaxin in here because Abbott sent me a tray. So we got to get more of that in here. <laughs> so that's so, what we need. Yeah, right. That's yeah. great. So yeah, so we would actually get them and we would have a few at home. But I mean, uh, the, <laughs> if you ever have a, a cooking spatula, they're actually the, the the counting spatulas are just as good as those too. But yeah, I mean, I don't have a whole lot of things laying around my house that I need to count by five. <laughs> sure, so. that you need right now. <laughs> that you need that much. Sure. Okay. Fine. I want those Bond ones from the Bond movies, the big spatulas we always talk about on the show, and when we watch it on Film Sack, they where they reach out and flip cards with the big long thing. That's oh, what I want. oh, oh, the uh, like the casino paddle things. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. I want a pair oh, of those. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, yeah. I won't cook with them, but I just want to have one. Do you have your, do you have your Simlish handy? My thought, s- squad on it, baccarat bulk. <laughs> I don't have it handy, but I'd love that. <laughs> oh, bit. okay. You know something that we do get, uh, that we do kind of. Some people collect them too, and we have it. My wife has a few really old ones. And uh, Johnson, I bet you have a mortar and pestle at home. Oh yeah, because mm-hmm. of all the uh, spices mm-hmm. and stuff that that yeah. you know your wife makes and stuff. So that's very handy to have at home. Mm-hmm. And we use those in pharmacy because you can, uh, you know, you're basically making either poultices or or, or doing other compounding where you're breaking. You're either breaking down sometimes uh, into emulsions or just breaking uh some tablets down into powder so you can uh do some compounding and such right right now it's uh look you you got to have the tools if you're going to get the job done right that's what we're getting that's Just, what this and, all comes and, uh, somebody may have to look it up it's probably the first time anybody said the word poultice on the morning stream yeah i don't think anyone's ever said poultice <laughs> You may as well no, say. You may as well say. First time poultice. You what say, about a mustard plaster? Oh uh, yeah, that, mustard that plaster. Poultice. Sure. Yeah, it, it probably goes down. It might be more of a maybe more of an emulsion, but mm. you know, you know, you never know. Yeah. No one's ever said that either. No one said emulsion before. <laughs> no one has said emulsion. Yeah. How about actually? I'll bet. Uh, 
I'll bet uh, for some reason I'm feeling like Bill might have said an emulsion. Oh. Might have described something with an emulsion. Some chemical thing, yeah. Some resin mm-hmm. thing. Yeah. How about a uh, uh, what's that word I never use? It's um, how about a salve? You know, a nice salve. Oh, a salve, yep. yeah. Plenty yeah. of salves. Oh, so that was the, that reminds me too. Uh, you do sometimes will use one of those. Uh, uh, it's funny that you say that because sometimes we would use a uh, one of those spatulas because you can kind of mix your own creams at home. Sometimes people will mix like over the counter hydrocortisone with maybe a little bit of uh, you know some other over the counter creams that you might find. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, like a, a uh, bacitracin or something like that. You know, and you use those. Uh, you know, you, you have if you have a little bit of wax paper, which is another common thing for for cooking. You could do kind of a half and half, and you would use a spatula to kind of. A lot of times you'd use a little figure eight thing, and you can make like a 50-50, uh, and that does help a little bit because you may not want the full amount of just the steroids. So you might want to steroid and an antibiotic to make your own at home instead of buying something that's like twice the price of that yeah yeah well all right so look we've learned many things already and we're going to learn one more when i ask you this question why do brand name drugs cost so much more than generic ones now i understand in a more like let me use a practical example i know when i buy nike shoes why i'm going to pay more for those than i am at pay less right Usually, exactly. it yep. means the quality of the shoe, though, is a lot better. You are pay- you are paying a lot for brand recognition, but also the mm-hmm. quality of those shoes are better than something I would get at Payless, some equivalent, you know, high tops or something. But why is this true in generics versus brand name meds when the chemical makeup of the meds are identical? Uh, what is that about? Is this just purely like a, I don't know, like a brand a brand well i only do brand name drugs like the way people only do brand name well it's purses or something at or first it's generally it's it's a monopoly thing too so uh think about when when you have a brand name drug that first comes out when we put out uh you know Ibitstein's, uh, you know, the next great anti, uh, anti-inflammatory. Be careful. Ibitstein. Okay, good. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so Choose when, your uh, next words very carefully, yeah, Dan. Your ED when, medication. When he's a, you know, he's the only one. So now, you know, uh, Brian, uh, Brian's company is the first person to put out this drug and, and they have a patent on it. So of course, mm-hmm. nobody else can make this. No, no generic manufacturer can make it because he has a patent on the, the chemical makeup of that. So he can charge a little bit more for that. And he will charge a little bit more and there's you know there's standards because generally almost any drug nowadays is not really going to be totally new or novel so there's only so much you can really charge uh without losing the market and of course the, you know that's a whole nother business uh to figure that out but so it'll be a lot more expensive when they come out and then what you're paying for there a lot of times is not necessarily uh the drug itself you're you're really kind of paying for the next 15 years of that company's you know, R&D, you know, the research, maybe you're paying for kind of what has already gone down because drugs, most drugs nowadays, you're talking about 15 to 20 years in a pipeline before they even get out there to be, to be, uh, you know, published or, or released and such and, and produced. So you're paying for that. Now, what happens when a drug, let's just say, depending on the drug, if it's a, what they call a me too drug, whereas, um, you know, if Brian's anti-inflammatory is just another derivative of ibuprofen, uh, you know, and, and they, you know, it's if it's uh, Brian Profen, then they may not give you the full 17 years. Uh, they may only give you like seven to 10 years of, uh, of Brian Profen before it goes generic. Um, it's right there, then, the first two letters of ibuprofen. It would totally be ibuprofen. Ibuprofen. Come on. Ibuprofen. Ibuprofen. <laughs> ibuprofen. Two Bs. Just add two That's Bs. That's right. They just, pronunci- they just changed the pronunciation, whole new product. <laughs> so then you may not get as many years for ibuprofen before it goes generic. So then, uh, you know, then once it's generic, now the, the brand name manufacturer probably will keep it still because they'll probably be the one that gets the patent, the initial, because generic even has their own exclusivity. So when something goes off patent, usually one generic manufacturer will bid for like the first six months or so. And then there's only one generic. So then it's still pretty expensive. So uh, then, you know, Brian may may actually win the, his patent for his own drug. So then it's basically he always doing is throwing his brand drug into the generic bottle and they're still making a lot of money off it for another six months. Uh. And then everybody else in the market can do because a lot of times uh, one of the better manufacturers and a lot of the big big time generic companies, almost all the big time generic companies are owned by brand name companies. So right. you're still getting the quality. Now, you had a really good. Johnson, you did a really good job explaining, you know, brand versus generic. But a lot of times if you go into like Walmart and you get those, you know, quote unquote generic genes, they're made, you know, they could be made by the brand company. But if what if what you're using a gene for is just to have clothes for protection, 
it doesn't matter whether you have Levi's uh, or Johnson jeans because you're just going to have you're just going to you, you use you're getting what you need. That's why a lot of times generic medications, they're just the same. I mean, very rarely are you going to get any more quote unquote quality right. because you just can't. The FDA is just way too stringent on quality and they are constantly having to send in, you know, um, you're constantly having to send in more data every year uh, or every other year or such uh, to, to show that your quality is just as good as it always is or just as good as the brand name. And then what ends up happening to some brand names, uh, you know, there's a lot of drugs where the brand name is just gone. They don't even make it anymore because it's just not worth it for them because there's so many generics and they're just not making enough money on because people are, you know, insurance companies are not overpaying. Right. Um, but there's all sorts of like, I don't call them backroom deals, but there's all sorts of like deals that are going on between like brand name companies and even like the state and federal government. Because I work, I basically do reviews for Medicaid in certain states. Uh, and a lot of states, the preferred drug on a Medicaid preferred drug list is the brand name of a medication. And it drives pharmacies crazy. And I can't really blame them because they're not really get you know, they're having to the stock this more expensive med and are not really getting as much paid for, you know, as high a pay rate as they could make. You know, their margins aren't going to be as good as if they were dispensing a generic medication. And I'm I'm sure the government's not paying them great anyway. Mm. Uh, you know, I'm just kind of a middleman. So I'm not really with the government. I'm kind of a middleman with doing the Medicaid. But there's so many brand name drugs that are, are quote, unquote, preferred because they get rebates from the brand name companies. So it's oh. it's not considered because it's the government. So it's not a kickback. It's a rebate. So it's just a it's all how it's all fancy wording for the same. So thing. it's interesting because right now there's a, a influx of uh, these drugs that essentially like uh, uh, Ozempic is huge at the moment for both. Yep diabetics as well as people want to just lose weight it's like the hot new thing um right. the you're starting to see the semaglutide stuff that doesn't have the brand name happen and people are getting it way like when i say cheaper i mean like fractions of, a, of the mm, cost right. of and Ozempic. only some of that is legal and and there's and there's a lot of loopholes and a lot of the compounding right. stuff in uh because for a long time the brand i mean the uh semaglutide wasn't available uh, for, uh, you know, as far as the, uh, powder wasn't available because my wife's compounding pharmacist. So she's dealing with some of this right now too. Right. So the big thing that you're seeing with, uh, Wigovi and with Ozempic is that they're on these huge manufacturer back orders and that's the company's got to get their butt in overdrive to put more out because if it's not available, then it is legal to do whatever, to, you know, whatever you want, as right, long as it's right. being made in those right, uh, you know, it's gotta, you gotta have, uh, I believe it's an 800 sterile compounding laboratory right, right. because again, this isn't just a tablet. It's gotta be, you know, this it's is an injected. injectable that even though it's I, uh, you know, I am or sub Q, uh, you know, it's still going, it's still an injectable that's going into the body. So you've got to, it still has to be very sterile. Yeah, uh, but so the reason reason I bring all that up is it seems like they they have the brand recognition and name advantage for the moment, right? So they mm -hmm. can still oh, yeah. they're still going to be the only ones you hear commercials about, uh, backlogged or not, at least for the foreseeable, right? And then they, I, I assume that that's the pattern this takes for a while. It's um, I don't know. Well, there's four or five main ones that you see right now that are all. I mean, and I see them every. And this is kind of the. This is pretty much like the biggest thing that I've seen in the last six months is all these weight loss or GLP ones, which most states won't cover it for quote unquote weight loss use. So they have to prove that they're using it for type two diabetes. Whereas uh, you know, other regular insurance companies, they may they may pay for either one. So right now you see a lot of Ozempic, you've got Trulicity, uh, Bayetta, uh, Victoza, and um, oh, I'm forgetting one. But anyway, so those are the the main ones that you see uh, a lot of. And um they all sound like bosses in a wing of a World of Warcraft raid. <laughs> they really do. They do. Yeah. Uh, he he uh, cleaves, so make sure you uh, you get it from the back. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, yeah. And and then so you and the other ones for weight loss they have are the newer ones. There's Munjaro, uh, Wegovi, and Zipbound. Um, these are all again. They could either be bosses, uh, Pokemon, or or drug names. <laughs> right. it's just, right. Those are all the main ones that you see now yeah. for weight loss. And so the thing is. Uh, I'm just waiting for the, the ceiling to fall because any time in history that something comes out that is the quote unquote wonder drug, yeah. all of a sudden one day somebody finds something and or it starts <clears throat> starts causing something and then they're all off the market for you. I really hope it doesn't happen because they are pretty amazing as far as helping with your uh, hemoglobin A1C, which is your basically your blood sugar. Uh, they're helping with the A1C. They're helping with weight loss. Uh, there are some side effects with kind of you know nausea and uh, nausea, which is a big one. But you kind of your body kind of gets used to that a lot of times. And yeah. then also uh, they're starting to see some things with kind of GI 
paralysis, uh, but that's not quite, it's a very rare one, but you're starting to see them because kind of part of what it does is it's it's uh, messing with your gastric emptying. So you're feeling like you're full as well as some of the other things that it does with your, uh, you know, with the glucagon and such with the- Yeah, it slows your, your way liver, down. So you see a lot yeah. of that. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, for- so If for, you're full, you're not gonna eat. For the type twos, it's, it, it does feel like side effects aside, it's got, you know, this is a powerful thing for them. Uh, as a as a, all the rage in Hollywood for everyone to lose weight, I, I feel like that will explode. Something weird's going to happen there. And oh, the the other thing is muscle loss. You lose muscle loss, or you get a lot of muscle loss on it if you're not working out all the time. So that's right. Other- well, and that's the thing that people have to really realize, and that's what you try to really stress to anybody using any sort of drug ever. And and uh, you know, even when it comes to things like uh, lipid drugs, like Lipitor, uh, you know, Atorvastatin, Simvastatin, like even drugs like that, you've got to have diet and exercise. You just can't be eating worse because you know you're on a weight loss drug. That's not going to help, and it's going to hurt yeah. all the kind of the the. I want to just. I want to say. I'm trying to say symbiosis, but that's not it. Like just all your copacetic of your body. Like everything's got to be working in order. If you're screwing around with one thing and not replacing other things, you're just going to mess up all your you know, all your cohesion of your, of your body. So like you said, you're losing weight, uh, losing muscle mass is not good because that's where, you know, like you say, uh, it is true that muscle does weigh more than fat. So, I mean, when your body's losing stuff, eventually it's going to start breaking down other things as well. So you've got to eat right. You've got to exercise. And it's an amazing drug. If you've got diet and exercise and getting you back onto the, the good train, my God, you can lose a lot of weight, get yourself back into a healthy area. And then, uh, like I say, with a lot of drugs, I mean, it, once you get to the point, I mean, obviously you can't do this with all drugs, but drugs like this, when you get to where you need to be, just stop them because you don't need to be putting crap in your body no matter what. You that's know, right. If you don't need it. Just, and that's and that's a far that's a pharmacist telling you guys that. You guys hear that? Listen to that. That's smart advice. I like it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dan, let's talk about the big news. The big news is Slay the Spire is already awesome. It's the most influential deck building game of all video game time. Uh, even if there are better ones since, you can't deny it's. Uh, it's, it's impact. Yeah, it's a, it, it is the first name on the list when you think of uh, uh, deck builder. Absolutely. Know, like, like, yeah. And my, it's still for, one of the best. I mean, even even though some great ones have come out, it's still one that people play like oh, crazy, yeah. and it's still one that people yeah. go back to. It's still like top um, 10, and it, top three probably it, of all time. Yeah. It, it might be. It might have been the first, and it's still one of the best, which is pretty hard to do. Uh, a couple of years ago, uh, they put out a Slate Aspire, the board game, uh, on Kickstarter, and it just started to release. So when Slate Aspire to Board Game came out, the first thing I said is, you know what? If I want to play Slate Aspire solo, I'm just going to play it on Steam. I'm just going to go ahead and grab the computer game. And then I went ahead and backed it out to the Collector's Edition level because I just could not hold back because it's Slate Aspire anyway. And even for the hope of it to be good, uh, I was all in anyway because yeah. you it's gotta just, do it. The, yeah, you know, the name carries some real, the name carries some clout. Sure. And I, like, I, there's sure. games I like even more. Like, I really like Monster Train a lot. I think Monster Train awesome. is almost the perfect version of one of these games. But I don't think Monster Train exists without the trail blazed by Slay the Spire. Slay the Spire. So, oh, absolutely, it deserves not. such right. a ton of respect. It's got a sequel that was just announced that's coming out in 2025. Mm. Oh, cool. But in the meantime, this board game. Tell me what's up. So I I'll, I'll tell you this, it came in last week on Friday and I and I had to dip into it. It is freaking amazing. It's so good, especially if you're uh if you're a solo board gamer like I am a lot of times, you know, you will really love this game. If you like roguelike deck builders and you like solo gaming and there's a multiplayer there are multiplayer rules they're a little chunky but they're still there and they're okay and i've i've by all accounts the multiplayer game is still very very good but i can't stress enough how great this game is and they're going to have a companion app which will probably speed up some of the things now i say this all the time and and before you laugh at me johnson i want to tell you this the game itself is a johnson game but the setup and gameplay is just not. I feel like it might be a little too fiddly for you because. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Keep going. Before, <laughs> because before before you even start playing the game, you've got to put like sleeves on about three hundred cards. Now oh, I don't know if you really. Even, yeah. You don't have uh, to. Well, Come on watch. now. Well, you don't have to, but when you're because it's a deck builder, so think about how many times you're shuffling. Have you, Brian, have you played Dominion yeah. a bunch? 
No, like, you know not. how much you shuffle. Like, okay, so I'm trying to think. I play like, games where I have to games. shuffle a lot, but you know what? There's something I like. I know. Look, I know. I know these purists. I know these purists like you, Dan, who <laughs> want to keep every card in mint condition and and spend you know two hours when they get a new game putting every single card in the sleeves. But I kind of like a little tiny little bit of dog ear on on the corner a little bit of a a nick here and there and you know if somebody has the wherewithal to say oh i know that nick is the uh 500 gold piece card (laughs) and and smart enough to get it when it comes up (laughs) fine fine with me i'm fine with it yeah well that's a good point because actually since you do so much shuffling it's they are i mean they're high high quality sleeves and i've gone away in the last (laughs) few years i am not really a quote-unquote sleever anymore there yeah. are only there are a handful of games that I will actually still sleeve, uh, but it's very very rare. This kind of came with collector's edition, which is kind of why I did it. Uh, oh. But again, you're shuffling so Wait, much. So it came with sleeves for the cards. Oh yeah 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 they oh, were wow. all in the box. Okay. Wow. Oh yeah yeah. So I didn't buy extra sleeves. These are all really. Uh, I'll have to send you guys uh, some pictures after afterwards um, w- about like what it looks like. But the sleeves are high high quality, and you can actually shuffle them pretty good. There were some sleeves. Uh, that came with some games, you know, that that are just not great quality. Uh, Star Wars deck building game that came out from Fantasy Flight last year. They came out with these promo sleeves. They were flipping awful. They were terrible. Like before you were even done with one game, they're splitting. Uh, they're they're coming apart. They were just awful. These sleeves are among the highest quality sleeves that I played with. But the game itself, when you're setting it up, so different nodes. You know how that map. You know the map uh, of like Slate Aspire where you're going up the different paths. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. there are certain nodes in there that are random. So right. you have right. kind of like there's two different types. There's there's one with a white back and one with kind of a, a gray back. And you're shuffling those up and you're putting those out for you know uh, Act One, Act Two, and Act Three. So you got to do those before each act, and then. Act one, act two, and act three both have, uh, all three of them have their different, they have the different question mark rooms, which are all cards. They have elite rooms, which are different cards. There's summons, which you don't have to shuffle those because they're just summons. And then there's the encounters, and those you all have to shuffle. So you're shuffling all that stuff. When you go to act two, then you've got to put those away into the box, grab out act two, uh, all the new cards, <laughs> shuffle those up, then you're reshuffling. So and then you have your starting deck, which is about 10 to 12 cards, depending on which character you use. And then you have your kind of your drafting deck, which, you know, after each time you win, there's rewards. So you're right, drafting, you, you pull yeah. three cards. So you have to shuffle that pile before each act because as you're getting them, you can get, there are a couple of random cards that are called golden tickets that basically what it does is it'll give you that uh, that chance, that rare, like if you pull one of those and you get a rare that will come up in your three reward pile. Then there's also things like artifacts that you've got a big stack of those that you're shuffling before each game, the potions, uh, and then the boss artifacts. So there's a lot, a lot of stuff. Um, but Johnson, man, you would love this game because mm. I know how much you love, I love deck builders. I love and it goes without saying, Brian, you're going to love this game anyway because mm-hmm. I, I think you're yeah. also kind of a deck builder guy, but I think you'd have yeah, more and, patience shuffling. And I like the, uh, I mean, the fact that you, the way you describe this is, uh, yeah, this is a game that that is almost better as a single player experience uh, than as a multiplayer experience. And that, that does... That does intrigue me because a lot of times Tina won't have time to play a game, and I can, I can knock one out down here on the uh, the poker table and play something. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Because yeah. I've had it set up on my game table. Because uh, I've got a game topper, I've got a, a set up on there. I've had it for like the last mm-hmm. four or five days, and I've played so far. I've played all four of the main characters because it's got the same four main characters mm-hmm. as it does in the base game. Um, mm-hmm. Was it the Ironclad? The uh, Green Guy, um, the uh, Defect, and the Watcher? Right. I can't remember what the. <laughs> Uh, the, the silent is that the name the silent or the green guy's ba- he's kind of your it's like your nature uh your druid style thing but they have a name for it i don't yeah. forget it they've got oh, all four is. of those I've played the ironclad through. the silent you're right the defect and the watcher those are your four yep. and they're all on there and they all basically and what's cool is the game also has like quote unquote unlocks so there's cards that you're not supposed to use until after you've played through the game a few times and then depending on how many bosses you beat you're unlocking some more of those cards to throw in the game, and it's and it helps the difficulty a little. And then there's also ascension levels that you do unlock as well, and put other things that make bosses harder. So the whole game is kind of meant to be played more and more and more. And it's it's I beat it on a first try with the first three the first three characters. The Watcher I lost after first act, so I started it again. So I'm right in the middle of another playthrough with the Watcher. Uh, but and and of course, like you know, sometimes with the with the video game. You're doing these crazy combos and things where you're doing like 30, 40 damage, things like that. The game is distilled it down so like the numbers are much more manageable. So it's not quite exactly the same as the video game as far as kind of what things do. But the way it handles the monsters, the way it handles the bosses is amazing. It does have some challenge uh, that will kind of, you know, 
and it challenges go up as you play it more and more. But I can't stress enough how freaking cool and how amazing this game is. I'm very happy to hear that. My only complaint about Slay the Spire to then and now is that the art, I hate the art style. I freaking can't stand mm. the, the yeah. drawings and stuff. It doesn't look like it's getting any better on Slay no, the Spire. No, it's on some of these cards, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I see it there, yeah. Yeah, and the sequel's probably. Oh, and, and they have edition, yeah. they had a special edition where they put out where like it had like special edition, like first things art, and that's even worse. And I, I was like, yeah, I'm not getting that. I just, you know, at least they tried a little bit and it's and a lot of it was, with some of the cards are a little bit up dating but most of it is is the same art from the video game and, and that's what drives me crazy about the video game so the video game slay aspire 2 it says going into early access in 2025 and it looks a lot of the art looks the same yeah. and you know how to play the game you're not really giving us that much you know you're giving us yeah. maybe another character but what's going to take so damn long you should have been you know creating this in the last few years because it's been out for i don't know how many years it's yeah. like aspire's been out yeah i guess I, I, I hate waiting <laughs> and i hate not i, I really don't know where the innovation is going to be i guess it's, we're not going to find out for a whole nother year so it's going to be a while yeah. but uh in the meantime hopefully they borrow some some from some of the innovation that some of the other companies yeah. have come out and with. if any of you out there yeah. are tired of slay the spire please go play monster train it's so good. <laughs> it's so good. It's my preferred one. Yeah. I like it more than Slay the Spire. It's a fantastic and hundred, game. I have hundreds and hundreds of hours in, in Monster Train. I got to the, I think it's like, whatever it is, Ascension 25. They call it something else. I don't think they call it Ascension. But but man, I played the heck out of it for so long. And uh, I haven't played it in a long, long time. But I, man, did I play the heck out that's of it. How you know, like, that's how you know a good game is good. I bought it on Steam. I bought it on Xbox. I have it on PlayStation. I own it on mobile. It's wonderful on iPad. Um, it's just it's so good, you guys. That is such a good game. And every time I used to log, I used to log into Steam, and I'd be just like, "All right, we'll let's see where Dan is today." Oh, Monster Train. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> you were and, always and in there. If anybody can go to the uh, go to the Discord and just uh, you know let us know what your favorite roguelike deck builders are, because there's so many now that they fall into the radar. Yeah. Like I've got probably a half a dozen that are kind of coming soon in my Steam wish list, but I'm always looking for new ones. And, uh, and you know, and that's kind of the, probably the most common thing that me and Johnson will text about. Oh, did you play this one? Did, yeah. you, did you see this other one? Yeah, like this and new one, like uh, Rogue Spells, one I'm currently hooked on. It's It mixes dice with, uh, so it's basically Slay the Spire and Dicey Dungeons mixed. Uh, if you ever played that spell game, rogue. Cool. spell rogue. Sorry, spell rogue. Spell rogue. I always want to say rogue spell. And mix it up. But anyway, uh, it is awesome. I wish that was on mobile. It's not. I wish it was also on Mac. It isn't. Um, oh no, it is. I'm sorry. The update is it? it. I think so. Shit. Am I thinking of something else? I think it is. Anyway, cool. that that cool. game's fantastic. Okay. If you like mix list. like a little yeah. dice in there. Oh, what a game! So good. Uh, well, Dan, uh, as always, a pleasure. Uh, may all the board games you get be full of rules and uh, difficult uh, scenarios, and uh, <laughs> and I hope I appreciate you know, it, boys. Yeah, uh, I hope whatever. Out, uh, oh, go ahead, go ahead. No, I was gonna say, check out. Uh, we're gonna be recording another Geek All Stars this week, uh, and uh, you can find me at Geek Jack Dan on Twitter. And like I said, let me uh, or X or whatever. I refuse to call it X. Too. I know I can't. Uh, do it. But but of course, let us know any of your roguelike deck builders. I will see you guys next time, and have a great week. Awesome, dude. See you later. Uh, I was just going to mention this, and I'll I'll preempt it with yeah, this. Yeah, Spell Rogue, ah! still no Mac. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, I was just going to... Ah! This is just a notice that uh, Dune 2 Digital is available today. Today is the day. <laughs> oh, so go to Apple. You can go to Apple. You go to Amazon. Wherever you get your 4K digital... Uh, you know, this isn't like Netflix streaming. Not like that. But, like, pay 29 bucks and own it. Today's mm -hmm. your day. Today's your day. Nice. Nice. Sorry, what were you going to say? Oh, Spell Rogue, uh, no, no Mac version yet. What was I thinking of? I don't know something just got mac support and i was so excited was it i mean you mentioned baltoro which I oh that's really it bought. that's it yeah yeah that's what it was another amazing game <laughs> that is another amazing yeah game. that's amazing. i haven't top. yet i've got it installed on here and i have not i've still been uh last time i played it was still on my switch because i can only play it on the big screen with the switch now i can actually have it on the yeah. in the corner and be like oh, i'm talking on the I'm on a Zoom call with a customer, but I can play a little Baltoro. It's an amazing second screen. I'm on a meeting, a boring Zoom mm -hmm. meeting game. Mm -hmm. It's perfect for that. Uh, all right, that is going to do it for today's show. Real quick here, tonight, the Monday show on a Tuesday. Carter had an appointment yesterday. We'll tell you all about how that went, but uh, that'll be tonight at 6 p.m. Uh, also today at noon, Word on the Street with me and Brian Holinka, formerly of Blizzard fame, now uh, now with the uh, fantastic Pixel Castle crew. Going to talk about video, or going to talk about um, their new MMOs combat. Uh, so far, I mean, they're early in the process. They just showed off some stuff. 
I'm going to really pick his brain today. So be there today, noon, right here at frogpants.tv for the live show or the podcast later. And I think that's everything. Unless you have something, Brian, do you have anything else before we go? Nothing. Um, uh, we'll see. I've got, to, oh, I can't even hold this up because it'll spoil a, uh, a potential Taskmaster. Not even potential. It'll spoil a Taskmaster thing. So I can't show people what that is. But if I can get this thing done, then um, a little Millennium Falcon build today. Hopefully. Nice. Hopefully. Instead of, instead of me lifting, watch me lose small screws in my, uh, in my workshop. Uh, a lot of fun. A lot of fun thing to do. Yep. The funnest part is finding those screws after you've lost That's them. That's right. That's why I have magnets. I have those magnets, Scott. Magnets. Wow. That's fantastic. Magnets. Uh, let's Make get... America magnetic again, <laughs> folks. <laughs> Sorry, I was sleeping. I didn't catch what you were talking about there. Yeah, I heard he slept in his, uh, fell asleep in his uh, thing. And his mouth went slack. I love it. That's amazing. Uh, All right, let's uh, dive into- Wake him up. Wake (laughs) him up. Wake him up. I mean, look, I would be bored in a case as well, but this is like a big one and you're also on camera. They keep bringing up hush. Every time they bring up hush, makes me fall asleep. He's oh, hush the, money. The, the Trump paid some hush money, and I fell asleep because I hear the word hush. Yeah, he listened to his mom when he was little. I get it. <laughs> hush, little baby, don't say a word. Uh, right. Grow up to be a great big turd. All right, Brian, let's play. <laughs> let's do a song out of out of your uh, ma- massive library of songs we can play. What do you got? Okay. Uh, hey there, slicer and beefsteak says uh, Andrew slash. Bubba West. I'd like to request a cover of or by Dave Matthews Band for my beautiful wife, Justine. Hmm, ten years ago today, my wife... I'll do the whole thing in Dave Matthews speak. Ten years ago today, my wife and I were surrounded by friends and family getting married at the Chapel of the Flowers in Las Vegas. Since then, our plans have changed in ways we never could have thought. We moved 25 miles into the country onto a five-acre plot because our cat, Griswold, was a terrible neighbor. She wanted a garden. Now we have two giant greenhouses, 10 fruit trees, 47 chickens, three cats, now 46 chickens, two dogs, now two cats, uh, a nearly completed Airbnb in our basement, and a pretty booming business at the local farmer's market. If my plans go right today, when she hears this, we will be driving into town to eat at our favorite Mexican restaurant, Guadalajara's. There's no J in there. I was hoping it would be Guadalajara's, but it's Guadalajara's. He says, Justine, I'm excited for every moment we get to be together. I love you, honey, and I'm sorry it's not the Bob and Sherry show or the brand that sounds kind of sexy. Oh, oh. damn it. Still pretty neat, though. Uh, Bubba, West Acres Garden, Stratford, South Dakota. I need more information about that last line, uh, Andrew. Okay, yeah. Please. yeah, can you fill us in on what you meant by sexy, Brian? Please. Yeah, maybe I wouldn't. Maybe I'm going to go to another request right now and uh, pick somebody else. Uh, P.S. I have right angle scar on the tip of my finger from pinking shears because I didn't listen to my mother the first, second, or third times. Little boy Bubba was naughty. Wow. <laughs> all right. Letting it all out. Damn it. All yeah. right. Well, I'm going to play your request anyway, mm. Andrew and Justine. I don't know what the Bob and Sherry show or uh, uh, the, the brand that sounds kind of sexy, but, you know, whatever. Fine. I'll play this anyway. Um, speaking of sexy, this is a sexy cover. This is uh, Jody Sider's cover of the Dave Matthews Band's The Space Between, a beautiful song to begin with and then delivered by the amazing vocals of Jody Sider's just uh, increasingly um, exponentially sexifies it. Uh, from her album Uncovered from 2013, here's Jody Sider's and The Space Between. Get more at frogpants.com. Pleasure treasure. Ooh, pleasure treasure. Mm. Pleasure treasure. 